Good morning, y'all. Um, it's our uh, morning devotion for whatever day this is, Thursday. Um, hope you're all doing well. Uh, I wanted to share with you the other day, um, I was having a video chat with my brother. Uh, and I apparently was not paying enough attention to the dog. Because I noticed halfway through the chat that um, she had come into the living room and was parading around quite happily while carrying a toilet brush in her mouth. Because that's my dog. Well, anyway, I got up and took care of that and it was as I was washing my hands after, you know, putting it away, that I had the thought, oh, I'm so glad it was only a toilet brush. I don't have to do the full, like, you know, routine of 20 seconds. And then I had the thought, how strange is it that I just thought, oh, thankfully it was only a toilet brush. What kind of crazy times are we living in when a toilet brush feels cleaner than a door handle or heaven forbid a handshake? You know, <laughs> regardless of the fact that we're all living it together, there are some moments that just make you realize that we are definitely living through some very strange times. And I think now, as we're, we're all into our second week of a full shutdown, with some of us having been in self-isolation even longer, we're all kind of starting to feel the craziness, the, the stress of these unusual times. And it's important to recognize that feeling that stress, all these emotions that come through weathering that storm, as we heard in our devo devotion the other day, all those feelings are normal and they may change every other hour or so. Sometimes we are grateful that we finally have the time to paint the fence. I'm not painting any fences. Uh, often though, we're bored or we're feeling like we ought to be doing something productive or we're stir crazy. And increasingly, and maybe as it gets later into the evenings for some of us, we're feeling anxious or angry or lonely or despairing or afraid. And all of those are completely normal in this. The whole world is feeling them too. As I saw posted online the other day, none of us have ever lived through a global pandemic. We're allowed to feel concerned about how it's all working out, how it will all work out. I really appreciated Wendy's devotion from the other day, how it's important to recognize that the Bible doesn't shy away from acknowledging that we all have those bad days, those bad times. How so many scriptures show us that throughout the Bible's history, people have turned to God with prayers of lament or anxiety or anger. The Psalms are full of prayers of all kinds of emotion. And even Jesus prayed that this cup might be taken from him. It's important to remember that we're allowed to feel those hard things. We're allowed to take those worries and those stresses to God. And it's also important to remember that these times, crazy as they may seem, are not the first crazy times that the church, that Christians have gone through. Far from it. I was reading a commentary on uh, the passion story that we'll be hearing in this coming week, just a week from tomorrow, I guess. And it mentioned that, you know, we, we in the Western world tend to feel like the church's place is one of stability, of being a solid presence. And while that is certainly true in many ways, it's often not in the ways that we're expecting, the ways that we're used to thinking. Christianity itself is founded on the most crazy times of all. Before the resurrection, the cross was only ever a, a sign of bad news, the worst of events, a crisis in and of itself. And when Jesus died on that cross, what a horrible, catastrophic thing to have happened. Some of the tellings in the Bible even say that a literal earthquake took place when he died literally shifting the ground under our feet, everything overturned, uprooted, all that we as the people of God once knew completely changed in a moment. The church, our understanding of God, our understanding of ourselves would never be the same. I wanna read you a passage from this commentary I was reading. The author writes, what does this mean? 
It means that biblically, theologically, we are more than equipped for now. It's in our DNA and always has been. It means that in Christ, when we feel unanchored, that just might be where God needs us to be. And it means that as a church, when it seems that structures and systems are on the verge of being toppled, that's when the church can truly and unquestionably be the light of the world. So no, none of us have ever been through a global pandemic and hopefully won't ever go through another one. And it's important to recognize that these are crazy times and that it's completely normal and helpful to cry out to God in prayer over things that are stressing us out, things that aren't in our control. But while we ourselves haven't been through this, God's people certainly have, the church certainly has. We've weathered storm after storm. We've seen time and again that it's in the craziest of times, the times when everything seems uprooted and overturned, the times when we seem to be facing even death on a cross. That's when we can be assured that a resurrection will come, a new life that will bloom like the flowers outside of my window. We are a people founded on that promise, on that hope. So as we look ahead to Holy Week in just a few days, let's never forget that Easter is just around the corner and nothing can keep that new life from bursting out of the grave. Amen. Take care. Have a good day. See you later.